Right, as you can tell, we're all dressed up. We're gonna do some dangerous stuff today. Right, hopefully not too dangerous. Land Rover, in fact, any headlights. So, this is a headlight, so Kate's looked this up. This is for a Range Rover L405 2013, and this on the system is... 1,800 pounds. 1,800 pounds, including that. Now, headlights are getting super trick, and they're brilliant, and we've done some videos with all that, what's it called, adaptive driving beam, where you're effectively on main beam, and, it, and that is all really good, but it all comes at a price. There is a lot of technology in a headlight. So, in this video, we are gonna try and look at, can we replace the lens in this headlight? So this headlight, we bought off eBay for like 60 quid, which is a bargain, really, 1,800, and we've got a crack there. What other damage we got? We got some lugs missing off, a lug miss. It's almost like, clearly they don't, but it's almost like car manufacturers design the lights so that at the slightest tap, they break, because they could make these brackets screw on, couldn't they? They could be replaceable, and there's a whole discussion to have, join in the comments, about should things be designed so that they are repairable? especially if you're going to have headlights that are the most expensive one we've come across was the new Range Rover and each headlight was £4,500 which yeah if you have a crash and two headlights are gone that's £10,000 before you've even started so headlights are a sort of thing so we need to talk about that right we are going to have a go if we if we can do the lens so we sell and we have available and we think this is kind of eco products because obviously if you throw that in landfill, A, it's in landfill, but you've got to buy a whole new one and all the energy that's gone into making that to make a new one. So if we can offer products where people can repair it, that in our book is, is good. So this is the lens. There's more technology than you'd imagine just in a lens. So obviously it's made from polycarbonate. Um, it's obviously got the black face painted on it to give it its styling. And it also, you probably can't see it, but it also has a slightly rainbow effect to the lens. And that's an anti-scratch coating. Because if you don't put the anti-scratch coating on polycarbonate, it does scratch very quickly and easily. So there is quite a lot of technology. Look, I'm getting it all dusty with my dusty gloves. The backing, there is... It's a tricky injection mold, so these are injection. So it's a very complicated tool to make this, to have it all in one piece, you've got, it's really a nightmare. But you can see here, this has got these, these brackets that typically break and it doesn't take a lot to break them, does it? Mm. So we are gonna take it apart. Now I've never actually done this, so I'm, I'm making it up. But you will note that inside the headlight, you can see these are all the, the places where clearly all the modules get assembled. So. If your lens is scratched or damaged, then the lens is at the front and I think going to take a lot of the damage a lot of the time, as this one has, then you could choose to buy a lens. And our first thing, we will try and see if it's possible to remove the lens. Now, in the old days, when I say old, I mean like 2005, so not that long ago, you could put them in the oven and we've got the oven at the back of the workshop and we've done that and the glue would go soft. But this new adhesive is like a polyurethane and you can put it in the oven all you like and the light will melt before the glue will go soft. So that's from our experience. Now, obviously we haven't tested every light to see if that's the case, but most of the Land Rover modern lights are using a polyurethane adhesive which cures, it's not a heat meltable thing. Right, so you've got to, so as you go, now taking the whole light, pulling the whole light lens off, in one piece is virtually impossible. So when we've tried this before, we tried once and sort of gave up, it's best to slice it into little slices and peel a slice off at a time. Right, so whatever you're doing, you're gonna need to cut into plastic and it's kind of tricky. We've ordered some Dremel plastic cutting discs, they haven't arrived yet, but the most, the these, this tool looks quite good, but it's quite hard to use. And that's got a saw. Because if you use an angle grinder or some tools where it, it sort of melts its way through, it's not so good. Really, you need something. But this, this disc on here scares the poop out of me. That's why I've got the... Um, so I'm not sure how safe this is. If you've got a better way of cutting plastic cleanly and safely. And also, when we cut through this, we don't want to go too deep. We don't want to go savage because we... We want to keep all the internals 
um, as protected and as safe as possible. So I'm going to have a go now. I'm going to power this in. I'm going to put my glasses on and we're going to try just taking one like pizza segment. Now, the, the trouble is, if you were destroying the whole lot, you could just cut it open and you're not worried about it. And that may well be the best thing for a lot of people to buy both bits and you're not worried about anything then, only the insides and you can go a bit more savage. But I'm going to try and do the lens video. But I, I, it's not going to be my recommended thing. I think I, I recommend you buy the two bits because I think it's going to be easier when you come to reseal the lens. You're not worried about all the old adhesive that's there. You're going to have everything new and you can put some silicon in and push together. Right, it goes. Right then. As I say, this, this is not a safe tool to use and I'm looking for safer alternatives. But for this video, in our controlled... Right, have you got your glasses on, Kate? Keep out the way. Right. So you probably can't see, but it's actually, it does a good job of, it, it doesn't melt it. It does create loads of little, so it does cut and chip away at it. And it does do a fairly clean cut, but obviously I'm limited. I'm going to take my glasses off now. I'm limited as to how close we can go, because I'm worried if I got too close. So it's a question of whether now, if we lever that out, let me get a screwdriver, and whether we can lever it out and whether we can pull it out. And it'd be interesting to see how it comes out of this adhesive area. Right, so let's have a look. If I can pull this out. Now, you see, oh, that's cracked it there. I'm interested, because that's the line, obviously. So we're gonna have to, in fact, it gets a lot thicker there. I haven't cut through. You can see I haven't cut through. So it, it actually changes thickness. Um, and we'll see that when I cut this out. So I'm gonna cut a bit more out. Right, we've, we've cut it a bit more. And I've managed to get closer, but I don't want to damage that. So let's let's have a look at that. Oh. Mm. Right, so what what is it doing? It's it's the that adhesive is, but you can see there is a, a ridge. And you can see how the thickness changed. Where's that clear bit? So you can see the, um, I can't quite work out which way it, it went. In fact, I guess it, it went like this. So you can see actually the cross section changes. It does get thicker in this black section. Um, and um, there you go. And that's actually made from black plastic, it looks like. It's not painted. So they must make it in two parts. They must inject the black part in and put it in a mold and inject the other one over it. So you can see we're starting to get some of the adhesive out, but I think that's the way you have to do it. Now, have I caught the inside? Or is that, no, that's just the way it comes. But that inner bit comes close too. So, right, so that's the first part of the video. And that's how you would change the lens. I think you're gonna to have to do it in little segments, pull each little segment and work it. You're never gonna get the whole sort of divide and conquer. You're never gonna get it all off together. Now, let's assume that we've got this light. Now, on this light, we need to replace the front and back. So I think going for the lens is gonna be the harder job. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut just along this edge all the way round and see if I can then remove the back and we're not worried about the lens. And I'm not worried about damaging the back or the, but I do need to be careful about these, these inner bits here, which we can see get quite close to the, I don't think I've broken it. I think that's just where it ended there. We'll have a look. So let's see if we can separate. So I'll put my glasses on and I'll, I'll start and then we'll, we'll leave you. Oh, 
Right then. So I think what we need to do is just, that's right, keep out the way. So you can see there we've we've cut through it. So what we now need to do is cut through all the way around the edge and see if we can just remove that rear housing. Right, so I've cut most of it apart now, but you'll see it does make a horrendous mess with that tool. Right, and what we've got to do now, but we've got to make sure we get the, not the back off, we've got to get the whole reflector out. So it should all come. Now, I was just having a look at it and it, it looks like there's a little, it's got a locating lug at this top corner. Ooh, let me spin it around. And it looks like there's a, it's, you've got a sort of lever the reflector out. There was a little lug I, I found in this corner. I seem to be locating. There you go, I need to get, whoa, I need to get the whole reflector out of with the lamp just to get that front lens bit off. Close, isn't it? That little bit there is just. Whoa, right. So that's the lens ish off, but have we broken or cut into any of the actual important bits in the light? So, so that all looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, it, it may be these locating lugs here that locate into the lens. Right, so there we go, we're around there, we're around here. So we, it's all come off complete with all the wiring. Now what we have got now is some exposed screws. So we've got a screw here, a screw here. There's one down there, look. There's a screw down there. So I guess there's four. One, two, three. I'm kind of hoping for one in this. Although it, it seems pretty loose. Maybe it relies on the... The lugs there, right? I'll get the Torx driver and get those out. Right, so the Torx T20 it looks like. So let's have a look what happens if we if we get this. So we'll have to get all these, we'll have a tidy up in a minute. It's probably getting close to lunchtime anyway. Oh, you got that one there. Mm -hmm. oh, oh look, he's into he's into that bit of the inch. So has he changed now what was yeah, so he's screwed into the base, yeah. So that's one of the screws that will connect the base. All right, so those two, they're the same length. All right, let's try that third one there. It was down in there, wasn't it? Yes, you got it. Now, obviously, we've still got all the control modules. It may be worth taking the control modules off before you start lashing into it, but... Right, so has that given us... Because we want to take this front sort of reflector. Oh, okay. Wow. okay, 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 okay. So that is coming out. Right, that, that's, that's the lion's share of it apart, isn't it? Okay, so we've got the main connector there and we've got the control module there. So, so there you go, a quick little look at that. So you see you've got all these, I used to make these flexible PCBs. So you've got all these flexible circuit boards taking all the power to the LEDs. Um, you've got the LED here. Um, but again, we're not sure whether we've broken any of these bits yet. It doesn't look like it. Um, so let's, let's disconnect those wires. Right, we've tidied up. That was getting too much, wasn't it? So it looks like we've got this little flap under here. We can, it looks like we press that. We should be able to extract that connector. How about that? Hooray! Right, so we've now got sort of two parts. So this is the main lamp. Sort of, most of it's going on there, isn't it? We've got the, obviously we need to give it a good clean and the dust before we put it back together. But we've got the reflector, the light bar, and it all seems to be pretty much intact. I don't seem to have broken. There might be something there we'll have to look at. Again, we'll, we'll have to cut a few of these. I think that's just glue off the, so I do think the glue touches it there. There's a, oh look, I've cut it here, look. 
that corner there is really close. Look, see where we've cut it there. I don't know if that will matter. I don't think you're going to see that, but so you have to be really careful in this corner here. It's very, oh, and you can see where I've cut it there. Look, so we're going to have to get a better way of cutting that to separate them. Um, other than that, that's looking all okay. Right. What have we got here? We've, so we've now, so that is, I'm, I'm guessing what function that is. That's probably the, this will be the main beam and dip beam. So this is the main power part of the headlight here. Um, so we've got to have a look what, how this is dot. There's an adjustment motor here. This green thread coming through is part of the rear adjustment motor. We've got the main connector comes in here. We've got the control pack here we can take off. Right, let's take the control pack off. Right, so these are Torx T20 as well. Now there was some debate, I was talking to Mo at LR Retrofits and he was thinking that some headlights on some cars are actually coded to the car. Um, but we haven't found that on the Defender. Let's have a look then if we can push that out. And then there we go, we've got a little tab on there. We can press the little tab and extract that. Right, and let's have a look. Are those screws the same as these others? It'd be nice if they used all the same screws. I think they're this. They might be different. And we'll put those three there and those there. I think they're probably the same. Let me pick another two. Yeah, they're the same. Right. Okay, so we've got the... So we're now back to our last puzzle, bit of the puzzles, to get the main connector out. And then this, this assembly here. Now, ah, it looks like they might be on some sort of, you see the green bit, you see it's got like a little grip there. We might better just, that would certainly slide off one way. That would slide out this way. So what have we got holding the other side in? Sometimes they have one fixed point and two, so we've got, we've got one adjustment here and one down here. So it must pivot about this corner here. Right, let me have a look. Right, it looks like this bezel clips off. We've just given it a little, it looks like that's on some sort of retaining. I'll have a look, clips. There we go, so what's holding that on? So it looks like these little arrow-headed things there. It doesn't look like I've broken them. They look like they are bent round. Yeah, because they're all the same. So you've got three of those clips. So that's that inner bezel. And then, Right, are we getting close? So we've got this adjuster here. Um, Kate spotted two screws. Yeah, one at the back. One at the back, right. It's not too bad so far, is it? It's not. Right, we've, we've lost that one. And then there's another one. So I'll move it around in there. It'll be interesting to see. All right. oh, my screwdriver is not magnetic enough, but how much movement has that given us? Not a lot. Now I did wonder if we could slide this, because this looks like it will, it will slide out. No. Let's see if I get a flat blade screwdriver. See if I can slide, because it looks like this little square bit is holding this on here. It, it's almost like if I slide it out, it'll, it'll eject. So let me get a flat blade. Right, let's have a look. Can we get in, in somehow behind here? And, oh, look, yeah, yeah, yeah. That slides out. I honestly haven't done this before. We're not doing too bad, are we? Right, so that is the, so you can see that slides and grips the, well, let me take my gloves off. It might be easier to see things. So, right. So, that's that's now free. Now, I think we've got a similar one here. So, will it, will it slide up of its own accord? No. 
have I got to push that one down again? There you go. Alright, now it's it, it's held in in this top corner, which which is which is interesting. We're we're nearly there. All right, let me have another investigate. All right, so this clip seems to be, I can't quite see it, but yeah, that, that seems like we, we can dislodge that. Right, what have we got? Okay, so this lamp has come to me without the um, main bulb. That's been disconnected and removed. I can get that wire out of the way. All right, now what's, there's a connector here, which is probably for, we'll have a look. We can eject that. Right. And there we go. So that is the main high beam dip beam. Ah, so that there, that connection there is for the motor. And basically these are like a puppet show. You probably can't see through there, but there's actually a flap in there that moves. And you'll, the bulb stays on the same power for dip beam and main beam. And all it does is open up a shutter to allow the, the light. So... The, that is a dip beam and main beam unit. Sometimes you can activate the shutter. But, yeah, that's... Oh. Yeah, I don't know if you can see inside. Mm. That there's like a shutter there. Mm, you can't really see. I can't really see. But that's how you get your dip beam and main beam. So that's the actuator for your, for your main beam, dip beam. So there we go. So that's that. Normally it would have the HID bulb. I'm trying to think, has it been mangled? I don't think so. I think these are just earthing clips more than locating clips. So that's cool. I love the way they do the writing around the outside of these. Looks like an expensive camera. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Right. So that just leaves us with the main body. We've got the rear. We've got just the cap there for changing the bulb. Um, and then we've got the, the wiring loom. We've got another little circuit board here. It looks like he just slots in there. There you go, he's got some, no idea what he's controlling. Um, oh, that looks like it's to do with the main beam dip beam then. All right. um, and then we've got another controller here. Okay, so how does that come out? Oh, that's got two screws on the end here. All right, now actually, in fact, let's get those other two screws out. Uh, there's the other. And are they looking the same as all our other ones? Yep. So all the screws are the same. Right then, let's get these last two out. Then we've just got to work out how to get those motors out. Oh, use the right screwdriver, Simon. So what have we learned? We learned it all comes out, you need to get the lens off and then everything comes out. Right, now. Let's have a look. Okay, so that's gonna push out that way. We've got everything there. Oh, oh don't we still got right, so let's have a look if we I think it goes into some sort of a rubber seal, it feels like. Ah yeah, so the connector stays fixed and we've got a little rubber sealing gasket onto the printed circuit board inside. Right, and then yeah, I think we can release this connector, hopefully. I think it feels like it's got little wings on the side. There you go. I'll have a, I'll have a look when we get it out. I'll show you better, I think. Right. So, yeah, it's got these little wings on the side that you have to press in to release it from its, its housing. So we've got that, that, that. So we've got the main connector we've got to remove. Now this so this is the main connector here now it may be tricky i think it's got a a special thing to stop you taking it out let me have a look if i can yeah i think there's a clip somewhere so i'm gonna have to work out how to do the clip right so those two screws we did earlier that we thought might hold this assembly in don't they're two of the, the screws that retain retain the motor These are the sort of, so this one in this corner is the, this looks like it's 
Is that a motor? No, that's just the pivot bracket. That sits on those three. And that just acts as the, the pivot or the fulcrum. This one here looks like it's a motor. Sort of the wrong side there, Kate. Yeah. All right. So does that? Oh yeah, that that wiggles out. Um, so that's one of the the adjusters. In fact, it's not a motor. It's just a manual adjuster. So you can see that the manual adjuster here. Oh, I've got the right size screwdriver. That will work. Look, it turns. You turn that little cog there. Now, obviously, in the new housing, you don't get that cog. So. All right, let me see if I can do it in a way where you can see, Kate. Can you see in there? Yep. We've got a... It's got two little ears on the side. We've got to just... Squeeze those in. I'll get some pliers. Squeeze those in and eject that. Mm -hmm. Right, so I get... If I squeeze those two little ears in... And give it a push, it should... It should push back. There you go. So... Right, can you see that? And it's these two little wings here you have to squeeze. It's got a little O-ring for weather sealing. And that's the cog there. So we'll need to put that back in. Right, we're doing pretty well, aren't we? So the only thing we're left with here is this motor. Now, it looks like it might be on a bayonet fitting. It looks like it might twist. Let's have a look. So it's got, it's got, it's, it's got the manual adjuster there, but it's got something else going on here. But it looks like the whole assembly is going to twist out. Right, it looks like it looks like it needs to twist. It's going a bit, isn't it? Might need to make a special tool for this one. There. Oh, that felt like it, it came loose then. There you go, yeah. So that's on a sort of bayonet fit in there. So you need to... But again, it's not a motor. It's just a manual adjustment. And as you spin this... It must wind this in and out to adjust the headlight position. Right, how are we looking now, Kate? We're nearly there, aren't we? Nearly there. Oh, it's just this big connector I've got to fathom now. There's some way they've got this locked um, using some... There's some tab here that drops into a groove and it stops you getting it out. Right, it looks like this isn't too bad. It looks like it, it will come out okay. I was fearing the worst. Right, there you go, that pops out, and that, right, so we've got nothing left on that at all now, have we? Nope. No. No. So in theory, we can clean and dust this all up, all the screws we took out are the same, and we've just got these components to put back in again and reassemble in, and we would have a new headlight. The only thing we've messed up is is the slight bit on the edge of here, wasn't it? Down here, um, where I where I got too close. So we need to perfect our way of cutting. Right, I think we'll finish that video there. We will have a go at cleaning it and reassembling it. Um, if you've got any better ideas of how to cut, or you've got any experience of how to cut that neatly and safely, let us know. We have got the headlight glasses and backings for sale. Um, and we're going to try and perfect this a little bit more. We're going to try and get better at doing this because we think it's really um, a cost saving and environmental benefit if we can repair headlights. Good luck.